Hi, and welcome back to Box Delights. Welcome to the Liberty or Death, the American Insurrection playthrough. If you remember last time, we just got past the support phase of the Winter Quarters. There's a game end check here. If this was the fourth Winter Quarters, that would be a game over right now. But we're going to push on, because we're only at the first. And we're heading into the redeployment phase. And this is where we get a chance to redeploy leaders. We've got to look back at the event card that's coming up. All right, and look at the order here. So the Indian faction is first, and they must make a leader change if possible. Our reference card here, the leader, leader capabilities card, tells us that for the Indians, they start with Brandt, who gave um, a bonus to Warpath. They didn't get to use that. Um, and then they change to the Corn Planter, and then to the Dragon Canoe. You can see each one of these leaders brings a different ability to the board. So for the Corn Planter, it says that the gather action now builds villages for one war party in the space. For this quarter though, it's just the corn planter replacing Brandt. Okay, so it's only that first player who does this. But every player now gets to redeploy their leaders if they wish. This is always done in a specific order. Indians, French, British, Patriots. Okay, so Indians first. And our non-player Logic tells us, uh, for the corn planter, it's to a neutral, passive province with two plus war parties and room for a village. If none, then a space with the most war parties. So we're talking anywhere but a city. Um, we've got two provinces that have room for a village, where the... actually three. One, two... Three. One down in Florida as well. New York's active. These are neutral, so it's neutral, passive. Each province can have two forts or villages, maximum of two forts or villages. So if we had another fort here, that would be full, no more room. Okay, so it's two of any type, but we can put another village here, another village here, another village here. And also down here in Florida. So let's roll our dice and pick one of those at random. That's a 3-1, which takes us to... Three one New Hampshire, which means if we run from New Hampshire, we get first to southwest. So the corn planter is coming over here. The French will be next, but they don't have a leader in place. So now it's my turn for the British, and I've got to think where I'm most likely to use my special activities because that's when Howe's ability kicks in. Um, I think New York at the moment because I can common cause here. I can skirmish here but not naval pressure. Common cause lets the war parties fight for me and then skirmish obviously to fight those guys. Yeah, I think we're going to try and... Let's put Howe here. Let's take Howe into New York where it's more central. Once the... Uh, probably in the next winter quarters I'll want him in a city. So now the Patriots and they've got Washington and he's just going to go to the place with the most continentals. There's three here in New York, and there's three here in Massachusetts, so let's roll. It's a 1-2, so it's Massachusetts, he's off to Massachusetts. They're really holding down this uh, northeast coast. Next up in redeployment is the British release date. So we get some unavailable resources come into play, and it says the first winter quarters round after 1776, which is where we're at. Six regulars and six Tories move from unavailable to available. Got lots more forces now. Okay, I'm happy about that. Next up, we would lower the FNI. We can't lower it, it's still there at zero. So now we're going into the desertion phase. Militia, continental, Tory. So in terms of removing militia first, the Patriots will do this, but this is a good thing for the Indians. The Indians get to remove the first militia. They also get to remove the first continental. So in terms of militia, they're going to choose a militia in a village, which is this one, but no more, because I think that was, is it eight on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Um, it's for every five rounded down. So with eight militia, that would only be one militia route really five rounded down, okay? To remove two, they'd need ten or more. Now, Continentals, and again, the Indians get to remove the first one. So again, it's one in five. They've got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that eleven? 
So they're going to remove two. So the Indians remove the first, and again it's going to be spaces with villages, which is here or here, so not here. Then they'll do the same to try and remove rebellion control if they can. So not here, not here. I don't think there's anything swinging the balance right now. And then finally to remove the last patriot of that type from the space. So the spaces where there's only one continental is either North, North Carolina or New York City. So we'll have to randomly choose. And the roll is a 2-3. We've we'll got backwards from Philadelphia. We'll see North Carolina it is. Okay. For the second one, the Patriots get to choose, and they're going to choose the one that's not going to change control anywhere. We know that that doesn't exist anywhere, so it's going to be random, isn't it? So let's roll those dice again. So we move one from New York. That's a desertion. And then finally, Tories. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've just got to remove one. Unfortunately, though, the French get to choose which Tory to remove. And they are going to choose, if I look at the AI, again, it's on the, it's on the crib sheet. Our loyalists, remove a Tory so as to change the most control possible. So that's not going to change control, nor is that. That. Then the last Tory from a space not already active support. That one's at active support. So we've got passive, pose. Yeah, so it's going to be one of these two. So it's going to be Quebec City or Philadelphia. That would remove the last Tory from a space not at active or pose. And of those two, we'll go for the one with the highest population. So, yeah, it's random. So it's either Philly or Quebec City. Do we go to Philly first? Yeah, we do. So it's going to be to remove this one. That one is deserted. Notice how these forces are going back when they desert to available. All right, they're not casualties. Now we've got a reset. And you're going to like this one. We remove all raid and propaganda markers. Everyone goes back to eligible. All casualties become available again. Um, all militia and war parties flip back underground. And we get to look at the Winter's Quarters event. Which, as it goes, doesn't do anything. Because this is about conflict in the West Indies where... Well, nothing's happening right now because the Treaty of Alliance hasn't been played yet. Okay, Treaty West Indies is not yet in the picture. Let's go ahead and do that and we'll get ready for the next era. And we'll start by flipping the next card. So we know what's happening. The Indians are going to go first, then the French. Let's see if this changes anything. The event here, Cherokee supplied by the British. Uh, growth in strength. Place a second fort or village in a space where we have one. So the Indians are going to take that event for sure. Um, place a second fort or village in a space where you have one. We have two villages on the map. One here, one here. Let's just choose randomly, since there was room in both. That's a 3-2. So Pennsylvania would take us first to the southwest, so we're putting one here. And that's French. So they're going to... Events been played. French resources greater than zero. zero. Treaty of Alliance played, no. Patriot resources less than 1d3. Well, there's zero, so it's going to be a yes. Rodriguez, Hoteles, Essi, before Chio, Chio A. Spend 1d3 French resource to add Patriot resources. If none, pass. Okay, 1d3 is a three. In other words, the French are spending three resources, 10 down to seven, and they're taking Rodriguez, Hotel, Hoteles, Essi. Cost <laughs> the great, great French rich. Okay, cost one or more resources. Increase patriot resources by the cost plus one, so they go up four. And of course, they get to do their special action too, or special activity, Preparer Le Guerre, which is to move any pieces from unavailable to available. Move either one squadron blockade to the West Indies, or three, not many available here, 
or three French regulars um, from unavailable to available. Three. Which is going to add to their preparedness. One, two, three. Taking us past the French may play Treaty of Alliance. Now they're in a position to play this brilliant stroke called the Treaty of Alliance. It says it can't be trumped. What that means is another brilliant stroke can't be played on top of it to trump it. Okay, I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but we can't play this until the French are eligible again. Okay, and it can only be played prior to the first eligible faction taking their first action. All right. So for now, then. These are going ineligible, and we're going to head into the next turn, and possibly then we'll see some activity. So, okay, we're good. If there was a winter's co uh, winter quarters showing now, French couldn't play TOA. Okay, they can't do that while winter quarters is is active or showing. All right, we've got Claude Louis Comte de Saint Germain. Uh, move five French regulars from available to unavailable for us, or move five French regulars from unavailable to available for them, and it's the Patriots to go first. So what we're going to see now then, um, we're going to see sequence of play, no, we can't do that, and the events are matter, Patriot resource is greater than zero, yes, Rebel Cubes plus leader is greater than the active royally, royalist pieces in space with both. So we're looking for spaces where there's both, New York City, doesn't count because there's more of us. New York province, three against three. No. Nope. Um, so are we going to rally? Place four in each space with four plus Patriot units. The four here. We can't place here, so no, they're not going to rally. Rabble rousing again. Rebel Rousing can shift one plus spaces towards active opposition. Yes, okay. So let's look at our candidate spaces for Rebel Rousing. Is any space with rebellion control and patriot pieces, or any space where there's underground militia? So, pretty much everywhere I'm at right now. This one's already active opposed. There's this one. Not in rebellion control, but there is. A militia here. That one's already active opposed, and so is that one. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. And we just said I'm to have four resources. So we don't need to spend any more. So this one's active oppose. Place propaganda markers as well. Remember? So one here. Active oppose. One here. Um, active oppose. One here. And we'll move this down from active support to passive support and activate our militia. And what does that do for support and opposition? We get one more added here, one more added here, two more added here, and for New York we lose two. So four to them, minus two to us. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's what you call big trouble. <laughs> One is two to us. And then just like last time, they're going to do a special activity and they've got zero resources, so it's persuasion. So we're up to three spaces where we have rebel control and underground militia. So our candidate spaces are in all of these. Not that one, and yes to this one, and yes to that one, but it's going to do it first where there's forts. So we're going to go here, and here in Norfolk, and of course we had our propaganda tokens as well. And that should give them two resources. And then we're going to take one more, because it's maximum three, but we're going to have to roll the dice to see where. By two. Southwest of Virginia, down to Charlestown, wasn't a candidate. North Carolina is the next one. 
Okay, so we'll activate this one and add another propaganda token there. Now back to me, I'd really like to have done Continental Marines, but the Indians are going to do that first. That's okay, then it's me. Yeah, I'm going to act on this one. Um, so I'm going to pass this time, and it says Patriots or Indians plus one resource, British or French plus two resources, and we remain eligible. Okay. So the French aren't going to act again, but oh, before the Indians can play Continental Marines, the French play their brilliant stroke, which trumps any event in play. Other players have these brilliant strokes too. Okay, this one says uh, for the Brit for the Patriots, execute two free limited commands and one special activity in any order. Leaders must be involved in at least one of the limited commands. Right? The British have the same thing. Okay? But we've got British may trump Patriot brilliant stroke. Right? So if they play this, we can play this on top and trump it. And say, ah no, you're not doing what you or <laughs> you want to do, we're gonna do ours. So it kind of makes the Patriots a little reluctant. The Indians, well they trump everyone um, with theirs. It's the same thing. And the French trumps the Patriots or the British. Okay, with their brilliant stroke. But for now, we're doing this Treaty of Alliance. And it says that the French enter the war. French, free muster and place Rochambeau there. Raise the FNI level by one. And we place three French and three British regulars first from unavailable, then if necessary from available in the West Indies. The French and the British are coming in here. FNI is going up by one. Three French forces come from unavailable to the West Indies. But we need to first do our muster. And the AI here says for a muster if there's fewer than four French regulars available, there aren't and then they would take the West Indies with those remaining forces, as, it was, as otherwise, which is what they're going to do, muster first in a colony or a city with Continentals, then randomly. Okay? So it's just one, uh, just one force coming in, one regular. So let's roll. That's a 6-2, which is Charlestown. There's Continentals there. Okay, so one French in Charlestown. And now these forces are going to start to spread out and take control during the French turn. Now we place Rochambeau there, of course. That was the next thing. Sorry, this is four French regulars. Four here with the Rochambeau. Okay, so when you muster up to four regulars, okay, for one action. FNI's gone up. Blockades are placed by the French as the FNI level is raised. So they're going to place one French blockade. And any time the FNI is raised, we get to place a French blockade. Add one blockade first in a city, selected for battle, then at most support. So we're looking for the city with the most support. Here's all our cities. The ones with support, with most support, is New York City. So that's where the blockade's going. And then all support is negated, so that's four support lost. We're in an awful state, aren't we? Down to three. Okay, and we can flip this because it's no longer needed for this, it's French at war. And finally, all factions become eligible again, and we move on. And there we go, we're up and running again. Well, I know there's a heck of a lot to take in here, but hopefully you'll see that it's not all that complicated once you get going. Once you get used to the flow of the, the charts and the flow of the game. I've obviously got a lot of work to do to try and pull this game back, but um, yeah, I, might, I might see how I get on actually. This is quite a difficult position to recover from. For now, I'll leave you with a last look at the board, and I'm going to enjoy carrying on with this pretty little gem. 
Bye for now. See you next time. <laughs>